SpaceX shocked NASA with an impossible trick. Their testing site is destroyed, so they modified Launch Pad 1 in just days to keep Starship alive. But that's nothing compared to this. They just pulled a dead rocket booster from the ocean floor after eight months. Booster 13 crashed in November 2024. Everyone forgot about it. Then suddenly in July 2025, SpaceX spent millions to drag it up. Why now? What secret did they discover down there? Let's dive right in. Here's the situation that left NASA engineers speechless. July 14th, 2025. SpaceX's main testing facility at Massey's site lies in ruins. Complete destruction. Think of this like Formula One's Monaco Grand Prix track suddenly vanishing three weeks before the race. Any normal company would delay for months, maybe years. But Elon drops this bombshell. Next Starship launch in about three weeks. That means August 4th. Three weeks to do what should take three years. NASA engineers called it impossible. Industry experts said it couldn't be done. SpaceX said, hold my methane, and got to work. They grabbed Launch Pad 1 and started performing surgical modifications that defied every engineering handbook ever written. Picture this. They lifted a support ring the size of a house and mounted it onto the orbital launch mount. It's like trying to install a basketball hoop on a skyscraper while the building is still under construction, in a hurricane, with your eyes closed. But here's where it gets insane. Static fire tests aren't just light engine, see if it works. They require precision fuel systems that took NASA decades to perfect, temperature controls that operate within fractions of degrees, and safety protocols written in the blood of previous failures. SpaceX was recreating all of this in days. The quick disconnect piping alone is like rewiring the electrical system of the International Space Station while it's orbiting at 17,000 miles per hour. Yet somehow SpaceX engineers made it look routine. Why the desperate rush? What's driving this timeline that borders on madness? The answer lies eight months underwater. November 2024, Booster 13 crashes into the Gulf of Mexico after its flight test. Standard procedure in the space industry. Write it off, move on, build another one. Space junk happens. Except SpaceX didn't follow standard procedure. Eight months later, they sent the LB Jill salvage ship to drag this waterlogged wreck from the ocean floor. The Port of Brownsville manifest shows one cryptic entry. Load rocket parts 1 million tons. One massive ton of twisted metal and corroded systems. Here's what doesn't add up. SpaceX has lost boosters before. They've crashed engines, destroyed test articles, and blown up entire rockets. They've never gone back for any of them after eight months of saltwater destruction. So what makes Booster 13 different? What did they discover in that underwater graveyard that was worth millions to recover? What information was so valuable that they'd risk their entire testing schedule to fish it out? The timing screams desperation. Right when they need to rush their testing program, right when they're frantically adapting Launch Pad 1, they suddenly decide to salvage a dead booster. That's not environmental cleanup. That's treasure hunting. But what treasure could survive eight months at the bottom of the Gulf? SpaceX's official line, environmental responsibility. Clean up the ocean, protect marine life, be good corporate citizens. Sounds noble, sounds reasonable, sounds completely false. Here's the problem with that story. If environmental protection was the real concern, they would have retrieved Booster 13 immediately after the crash, not after eight months of saltwater corrosion. Environmental agencies have strict timelines for cleanup operations. Eight months late isn't compliance. It's something else entirely. Saltwater destroys everything it touches. After eight months underwater, the engines are scrap metal. The fuel systems are corroded beyond recognition. The structure is compromised. The avionics are fried. So what could possibly be valuable enough to justify a multi-million dollar salvage operation? Unless they weren't looking for hardware. Unless they were looking for something that could survive underwater. Unless they were looking for data. Modern rockets are flying supercomputers. Every starship is packed with thousands of sensors, flight recorders, and memory banks that capture every millisecond of flight data. Temperature readings, pressure measurements, engine performance metrics, 
structural stress data, it's all there. Here's the kicker. Those data cores are designed to survive crashes. They're built like aircraft black boxes, hardened against impact, fire, and yes, water. Even after eight months underwater, those memory systems could hold secrets worth billions. What if Booster 13 experienced something during its flight that SpaceX desperately needs to understand for Ship 37's upcoming test? What if the crash revealed a critical flaw in the Raptor 3 engine design? What if those data cores contained information that could prevent a catastrophic failure on the next launch? Suddenly, that underwater graveyard becomes a treasure chest of engineering intelligence. Every sensor reading from Booster 13's final moments could be the difference between success and another explosion. But there's an even darker possibility lurking beneath the surface. What if SpaceX got word that someone else was interested in Booster 13? What if foreign governments or corporate competitors were planning their own salvage operation? In the modern space race, stolen technology is worth more than gold. China's space program has been accused of borrowing designs before. Russia's space industry is desperate for modern technology. Even allied nations would love to get their hands on Raptor engine data. The Gulf of Mexico isn't exactly a secure location. The urgency makes perfect sense now. Race to adapt launch pad one. Race to recover booster 13 before someone else does. Race to launch ship 37 before competitors figure out what SpaceX really discovered in that wreckage. This isn't just about testing schedules. This is about protecting technological advantages that took decades to develop. Remember, SpaceX just unveiled their revolutionary Raptor 3 engine. This isn't just an upgrade, it's a complete reimagining of rocket propulsion. They stripped away thousands of components, integrated cooling systems directly into the engine structure, and achieved thrust levels that seemed impossible just months ago. But here's what's interesting about the timeline. Raptor 3 development coincides perfectly with when they would have been analyzing data from crash boosters like Booster 13. What if that underwater data revealed something crucial about engine performance under extreme conditions? What if Booster 13's final moments showed exactly why the old design philosophy was failing? What if those waterlogged data cores proved that the complex external systems were actually causing more problems than they solved? SpaceX's the best part is no part philosophy suddenly makes more sense. They didn't just decide to simplify Raptor 3 for manufacturing reasons. They discovered through crash data that complexity was killing their engines. Right in the middle of this engineering crisis, Elon announces a Tesla diner coming to Starbase. Seems random? It's classic misdirection. While the media obsesses over robot waiters and superchargers, the real breakthrough happens behind closed doors. The Hollywood Tesla diner just opened with Optimus robots serving popcorn. It's the perfect spectacle to draw attention away from whatever they discovered in Booster 13's wreckage. Look at the shiny robots. Don't ask about the mysterious salvage operation. But there's something else interesting about this diner announcement. Elon said it'll be open to the public. Starbase has always been restricted access, a fortress of trade secrets and proprietary technology. Why suddenly invite crowds? Unless they need cover for increased activity. More ships coming and going. More equipment being moved. More late-night operations that need to look routine. A busy public diner provides perfect camouflage for whatever they're really doing with that recovered booster data. While SpaceX performs engineering miracles in days, they're still waiting for FAA approval. It's like watching a Ferrari stuck behind a horse-drawn carriage. This regulatory nightmare is exactly what's killing American space innovation. But here's the tell. SpaceX isn't complaining about the delay. Usually when the FAA holds up launches, Elon is on Twitter within hours, raging about bureaucratic incompetence. This time, radio silence. Why? Because they're not really waiting for permission. They're using that delay time to analyze whatever they found in Booster 13. They're using those extra weeks to implement changes based on underwater data recovery. The FAA approval process isn't the real bottleneck. It's cover for SpaceX to process the most valuable crash data in aerospace history. This isn't 1969 anymore. The space race today isn't just America versus Russia. 
It's SpaceX versus China's rapidly advancing space program versus Blue Origin's deep pockets versus dozens of international competitors who would kill for Raptor technology. Every day SpaceX doesn't launch is a day competitors get ahead. China just announced three major space missions while SpaceX sits in regulatory review. But what if that's exactly where SpaceX wants to be? What if they're using this time to gain an insurmountable technological advantage? The recovered Booster 13 data could contain insights that put SpaceX years ahead of every competitor. Not just in engine design, but in flight control systems, structural engineering, and reusability technology. That's worth more than any single launch. Here's where everything connects. Jared Isaacman was right. We've kept humans alive in space for 20 years without figuring out how to make money up there. But what if Booster 13's data revealed something about the space environment that changes everything? What if those sensors detected something during re-entry that nobody expected? Unique atmospheric conditions that could revolutionize satellite deployment? Plasma effects that could improve communications? Structural stresses that reveal new possibilities for orbital manufacturing? Companies like Varda are already experimenting with crystal formation in microgravity. These crystals can be exponentially denser than Earth-based versions, potentially revolutionizing medicine. What if Booster 13's environmental data showed how to make this process even more valuable? The space economy isn't just about getting to space anymore. It's about what you can do once you're there. And SpaceX might have just found the key in eight months of underwater data. Now, the desperate measures make perfect sense. Adapting Launchpad 1 in days isn't just about maintaining launch schedules. It's about testing theories based on data recovered from the bottom of the Gulf. SpaceX is racing to validate discoveries that could be worth trillions. They're not just testing Ship 37. They're testing the future of human spaceflight based on lessons learned from a failed booster that everyone else wrote off. The environmental cover story, the Tesla diner distraction, the bureaucratic delays, it's all part of the biggest engineering investigation in aerospace history. They turned a crash into a breakthrough. So what's the actual secret SpaceX discovered in Booster 13? Here's the theory that connects every piece. Those eight months underwater revealed something unexpected about material science under extreme conditions. What if the saltwater corrosion patterns showed exactly how their metals behave under stress? What if the structural failures revealed weak points they never knew existed? What if eight months of environmental testing provided data that would have taken years to generate in a laboratory? SpaceX isn't just building rockets. They're building the infrastructure for a multi-planetary civilization. That requires materials and systems that can survive not just space travel, but years of operation in hostile environments. Booster 13 accidentally became the most valuable long-term durability test in aerospace history, and now SpaceX knows exactly how to build rockets that will last decades in space, on Mars, and beyond. The rush to test Ship 37 isn't about proving they can launch again. It's about proving they can build spacecraft that will revolutionize human expansion into the solar system. And it all started with a failed booster at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. So here's what we know. SpaceX turned a destroyed testing facility into a launch opportunity in three weeks. They salvaged an eight-month-old dead booster for reasons they won't fully explain. And they're rushing toward a launch that could validate discoveries worth trillions. But here's the real question nobody's asking. What happens when every other space company realizes they've been playing checkers while SpaceX was playing 4D chess? Because that MacGyvered launch pad isn't just about one test. That underwater data isn't just about one booster. This is SpaceX building the playbook for how humanity becomes a spacefaring civilization. The scary part? We're probably only seeing 10% of what they're actually doing. Every accident becomes a learning opportunity. Every failure becomes valuable data. Every delay becomes strategic advantage. What do you think SpaceX really discovered down there? And more importantly, what aren't they telling us? Drop your theories below, because something tells me this story is just getting started. Until next time, keep looking up. Elon Musk just shocked China and NASA with one announcement that changes everything. 
While China plans to land humans on the moon by 2030, Musk revealed SpaceX can build an entire permanent moon base in just five missions, using technology that delivers 200 tons per flight, double what Apollo ever managed. But here's the real question. Will the next person walking on the moon speak English or Mandarin? Let's dive right in. Here's the real story behind SpaceX's Moonbase Alpha announcement and why China's space officials are scrambling to catch up. While the world focused on landing dates, Musk quietly revolutionized the fundamental technology that makes lunar colonization possible. The game changer isn't just Starship's massive size, it's the Raptor 3 engine that powers it. Picture this, an engine so advanced that when SpaceX first revealed it, competitors thought it was fake. Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, publicly questioned whether the photos were real. The engine looked stripped down, almost skeletal compared to previous versions. But that wasn't a mistake. It was genius engineering that's about to make China's lunar timeline irrelevant. The numbers are staggering. Raptor 3 produces 560,000 pounds of thrust. That's 100,000 pounds more than its predecessor and nearly double the original Raptor. But here's where it gets insane. This monster engine actually weighs 170 pounds less than the previous version. How do you make something more powerful yet lighter? By completely reimagining rocket engineering, SpaceX eliminated thousands of external components through revolutionary 3D metal printing. What used to require dozens of separate parts welded together now gets manufactured as single integrated pieces. The result? An engine so clean it looks unfinished, but performs like nothing humanity has ever built. But there's a dark side to this advancement. These engines are so integrated that when something breaks, SpaceX has to literally cut them open for repairs. Musk admitted they sometimes need to cut the engine open because there are no access panels anymore. It's a calculated risk, perfect reliability in exchange for impossible maintenance. Why did SpaceX choose methane? When everyone else uses kerosene or hydrogen, the answer reveals Musk's true strategy for lunar dominance. While NASA struggles with hydrogen's complexity and other companies rely on kerosene's simplicity, methane offers something revolutionary. It can be manufactured.